Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I've got a pretty crazy, epic, empowered team to show you today. Uh, we're looking at one of the, the dungeons that's had a whole bunch of nerfs. And honestly, this one I think is now the easiest of the nerfed dungeons and super accessible to most players. The Phantom's Grove has gone from being a bit tricky, kind of new intensive, to now being very achievable certainly as you're working your way up through the different levels the team i'm going to show you here is a strong team but it's a it's a team of strong epics rather than a team of strong like legendaries or mythical type champions so uh, that gives you an idea of how much it's changed because again you would not have been able to do this style of team two weeks ago before the nerf there's no way it would have happened before we get into the video i will link uh, yesterday's fateless video down below where we talk about level design how the concepts are built, some of the concepts for our different kind of like boss encounters that are coming through, um, and just some sort of fun, fun environmental stuff. So if you want to check that out, it will be down below. Make sure you check out the Fateless channel and sub to it. Anyway, let's get back to it. Um, so what we're trying to do here is showcase how strong epics that have been empowered can be, especially if you've got blessings. It's, I guess it's, it's a twofold video give you an idea of how you can start to build some teams to beat this dungeon, but also to show you how strong epics in your account can be now if you've got the right pieces to make that work. So let's go through the squad. I am actually going to use Mithrala, uh, not Mithrala, sorry, Lady Mikaj in the squad just because she's a cool ally attack champion and she was already built for me. But definitely you could sub her out. Uh, you could actually sub her out for a, a second fat man if you've got a second fat man, but you definitely don't need plus four in your fat man. Um, I just had one that was already plus forward. He's literally in there as a ally attack champion, a buffer, and he's in there to soak up the damage. So he's actually the target for our um, high crit damage person in the team. So I built him in bolster set just to be able to tank that first hit up. The rest of it really doesn't matter. You just want to get to a decent speed, 260. I've got mine. Uh, and then he has to be the highest crit damage person on your team. Uh, I guess I should show as well. I don't have too much in terms of stats, but I've got a bit. So I've got a little bit of speed in terms of stats, and I've got a little bit of ignore defense. The ignore defense really is huge in the area bonuses. Okay, I pulled about 10 galas during the weekend when I was trying to get myself a Taras. So I figure she's got to be in the mix. We've built gala long braids out to do damage. Uh, we have got ourselves 235 speed. 70% crit rate because we're going to get the crit rate buff from the fat man. 333 on her crit damage. 7k attack. She's plus board. She's got full blessing. She's ready to nuke. We've got Alika. Oh my lord. Alika is doing damage nowadays. Like damage. So Gala basically comes in and does A3 into A2. Alika is just straight up saying I'm ignoring a whole bunch of defense. And uh, I've got a weird crushing rend as well. Flipping X, she is doing so much damage right now. Got her in Savage Gear. We've got 242 speed, so less speed than the Fat Man. 70% crit rate. Attack and crit damage is where it's at. And then I've got Shrank in the team. And you're probably like, this is a weird one. I was looking for someone, and I wanted an epic for the video. Someone that could do Weaken on an A1. Now, it's not got a perfect chance. It's like only a 25% chance to do it. But because we're going in with ally attacks... If we can place that weaken, then that's going to give us more damage with all of these different ally attacks. Obviously, there's tons of different options that you could bring in. But what I'm looking at here in terms of my real damage dealers, my Alika and my Gala, they're both people that ignore defense or ignore portions of defense. And that's how we're getting like high levels of damage away. Whisper could be a, a candidate for that, but you'd need to be bringing drop defense and weakening to really make her work. That's definitely possible, by the way. You could remove Mikage and bring in you know, a Lydia or a Spider or you know, any of the drop defense and weaken champs. And then Whisper's in the mix as well. I don't have as high a blessing on my Whisper. So I thought I'd go with these guys. Uh, I guess I'll show you Masteries quick as well, actually, just in case you try and do something similar. She's just, Lady Mikage is just in my normal Mikage build. I haven't changed her build for this. So this is more like a, a clan boss stroke Hydra setup that I've got here. Uh, the speed is not important, just needed to be quicker than my DPS champions because she's also given us the increased attack buff 
So if you don't have Makage and you're trying to build something funky like this, someone who's bringing you increased attack would be uh, a blessing here. I, I've done it today whilst recording this video with Mithrala in this exact same spot, giving us the increased attack. I'll show you that, I guess, as part of the same video. Uh, Mastery's here on long braids, just bring in this one. I'm just wondering here, she ignores 50% defense. She ignores 25% here. I'm just, what, yeah, I was just wondering, like, do I need Helm Smasher? I think I still need it. Um, although with Crashing Ren 6 star, I don't even know if I do. I might be able to bring the um, crit damage mastery. I'm not sure. Alika, she's got herself a Helm Smasher as well and the damage mastery. So um, everything set up there. Scrank, not even got mastery. He's, he's literally just in there as a bot. He's in there as a bot to apply weaken. That's it. So someone else applying weaken with their A1. Perfect. These are our two damage dealers. Let's uh, let this play through. Now, I'll slow it down quickly. Because he's got highest crit damage, he's soaking up the enfeeble. We then get buffs, ally attack number one. We're going in there. We're hoping we get a weaken, which we did. For some reason, try and someone tell me down below, why is Gala getting a go before the fat man? I can't work it out. I'm missing something in a kit or whatever. I don't get it. She's slower than the fat man, and I can't work out why she's getting a turn. But she is. So anyway, you can see there, I wonder if as well, you know, I need the increased attack. I was just thinking like, can I do this without Mikage here? Well, let's just run it in full speed first. Run it full speed so you can see what this bad boy looks like. Fully fledged. Slam, slam, slam. Weakens on. Slam, slam, slam. One hit. Smack. It's like, it's between 11 and 13 seconds, depending on how big the hits are. Alika's damage is literally off the charts. It's absolutely nuts. So, tons of fun there. Let's just see if Mikage was just not in the team, but I had a different increased attack. I don't know, like a Seeker. I think my Seeker's built. You notice anyone who's not the main damage dealers have basically got Cruelty on for their blessing. Let's just see if this will get it done. It might not squeeze the damage out not sure may it may still do it because i've still got a chance i didn't get my weaken off see so that does reduce the amount of damage that i'm going to put out i think i would still get there it's just a much slower fight and we've got chances of stacking up some of these yeah we still get there uh yeah we've got chances of stacking up some of the the nasties oh actually it's closer much closer if I had my Mithrala doing the increase attack, uh, let's make sure she does that actually in my setup. Again, she needs to be quicker than your team, so she gets a buff out. Like, why is she? Why is she doing that? Why is she going ahead of the team when she's slower than the team? I don't understand it. I'd say one of the things which made this so much easier, and I'm seeing all sorts of teams coming out, by the way, it's just the stack gain from the boss is way less, and the damage that he's pun punching out is way less as well. It just it just made it tons easier to get this fight done. But um, but yeah, I mean, that's super cool, honestly. To be able to get a team that's really quick and epic-focused is, is kind of nuts. Um, he definitely... You could definitely switch this around. Obviously, this is a high level team, but in terms of like empowerments and, and blessings and all that type of stuff. But honestly, I think there's so many options now. I'm seeing people do this with solo champions like Adeline. Uh, I'm seeing people do it. Bam, look at that. Super easy. Yeah, I'm seeing people do it with like solo healers. I'm seeing people do it with a whole raft of different damage dealers now. And the main reason is that they dropped the defense of the boss and the HP of the boss substantially. Okay, to the point where it's it's now much easier to form your teams. So look, that's going to be it for this video. Um, yeah, I will say if you want to check out like some of these solo comps, if you, I guess if you want me to build one, I can. I've seen Adeline do it. I've seen other healers do it as well. Uh, they're relatively high kind of like requirement of regen gear in terms of. You know, high HP, high defense, and pretty high speed as well. 
But um, anyway, definitely way more accessible teams starting to become available. I'm not saying this is one, but there, there will be tons of super accessible teams for this dungeon now because they've just lowered the stats so much that I think pretty much anybody can get in the mix. Uh, but there you go, guys. Up in Hell Hades, wrecking the, uh, the Phantom Showdown with Epics. I'll see you in the next one.